everybody. Welcome hey. back to the Shack News live show from E3 2018, nearing the end of day one. Almost I'm your, there. I'm your host, David L. Craddock. I'm joined by my co-host, Blake. Hey, 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 hey. Blake, not Action Bronson Morse. Just That's Blake, what I'm doing. just Blake. All right. Yeah. And I'm joined uh, from two of our friends from Tripwire. I've got John and yeah. Bill here. Bill. Hey, thanks for having us, man. Yeah, happy to be yeah. here. Yeah, thanks. So tell us a little bit about what you do at Tripwire. Uh, we make video games. You make video games. Great. Yeah, <laughs> Wait, what? Perfect. Small world. We talk about video games. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so president, co-founder, uh, used to do a lot of programming, uh, did weapons, AI. Do you miss it? I do miss it. I yeah. miss it a lot. Yeah. But uh, somebody's got to drive the ship. That's so. True. Uh, That's true. But uh, so now I'm I'm uh, leading a lot of our newer initiatives, like moving into publishing other people's titles. And, uh, but most recently, programming-wise, I did AI and weapons on our VR game, Incursion. Uh, and, yeah, do some fun stuff. Excellent. Nice. Nice. Now, uh, you, if you're... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, oh. No. Uh, I'm a game director on Killing Floor 2, so all the madness uh, you, you <laughs> see <laughs> This is you. This is your yeah. vision. Uh, if you're watching yeah. at home and you are seeing some... Creepy, chaotic, gory mayhem going on right now. It's all thanks to you, pretty much. Uh, well, I mean, well, a small I, I, part. yeah. Well, yeah. Well, there's a, obviously a <laughs> I team did of program people. that shotgun. I do like <laughs> the look of that shotgun. <laughs> look at how great it's it's doing a great job yeah. of killing that that so, creepy clown. Which so, so might tell as well us be a little bit about the about the content you're showing at E3 this year. Uh, we want to start off with Killing Floor. Yeah, let's yeah, start. Yeah, off with let's, we got it right, playing. So, like, yeah, let's talk about what do you, yeah, what's so, new for Killing Floor too. And you know, Killing Floor is one of it, you know the, the great thing about Killing Floor is that each update we do, each iteration, it just keeps growing and getting better and better. And you know, the game uh, the game's been out for years now. And as of this update, we have seventy three weapons. Seventy three weapons. So what are the what are the newest weapons in in the latest right, update? So we got a. Uh, Four barrel shotgun called a doomstick. <laughs> it's like it's my goal. I want to try to you know make like the most badass shotgun. So we'll see what people think on this one. But you're just gonna yeah. keep adding barrels until it's the best. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, barrel <laughs> after barrel. <laughs> I'm in favor so, of that plan. That sounds like a good plan. Yeah. We also got the uh, static strikers, which are these like real crazy like you know like gauntlet fists. Like electro static fist. electricity, static like, electricity, you know, can do you, knock stuff out. Do they just have like carpet strips on them that you rub together and then you punch people? Right. Well, not, it's not really like <laughs> static strips, but it, you know, it's like EMP uh, energy yeah. out, disorient them and knock them on their ass. Nice. Do and you have Do you have any favorite weapons? Like, what are your like, you know, favorite children, so to speak? Like in the game? Yeah, in the game. Uh, so it would definitely, I think the static strikers are one of them. Uh, I've been waiting for years to get that weapon in there because, you know, like it's our first weapon where you kind of feel like you're punching and boxing stuff. So that's, that's really, really like fun. Get that, like that, like that visceral feel of like ripping just, yeah, something apart and watching it blow up. And, and then, I mean, the, you uh, got, I mean, you can block and stuff too, just like your boxing, like when the. Zeds attack you. You can block. Yeah, you can block. You can parry <laughs> on. Yeah. Their so attacks. you really are having a boxing match with so, genetic yeah. freaks. So it's like a punch out mode coming next, right? Are we gonna get a, like a, a dodge and block and like time it, or are we just gonna keep <laughs> killing hordes um, and hordes of ghouls and creepy monsters? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's uh, killing floor is about you know slaughtering a bunch of genetic freaks. So we just keep trying to amp that, that yeah. experience up. If it, if it isn't broke. Yeah, you know, don't fix it. But, yeah, uh, I would say my other weapon that I, that I really love is the uh, Stoner 63A. Yeah, it's a it's it's actually a, a Vietnam weapon. They only made they only made like I think 3,700 of them, and wow. the Special Forces it was like one of their fa like they coveted that weapon so much if they lost it on the field they would literally risk their life to go back to to try to get it. It's a real modular weapon, and you can turn it into a, a like a like a light machine gun by flipping upside down. And you can convert this thing so many different ways. So that weapon's tons of fun in this game. Nice. And believe it or not, it really is called the Stoner in real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you we wouldn't expect a gun like that to be reliable or fast. Yeah, you'd expect <laughs> it to want to eat Doritos. Yeah, and just and chill. Sleep. Maybe play some bongos like at three in the morning <laughs> when you're trying to sleep. 
<laughs> yeah, when I when I first heard about it, I thought someone was just messing with me. I'm like, yeah. what, Stoner 60? What? And I looked it up, and I was like, oh, yeah, okay, it's called the Stoner. <laughs> All right, bro, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. <laughs> Seth, call up Seth Rogen. Yeah. He's like, yeah, let's put it in the game. Okay. Hey, why not? Man, so, uh, man, Killing, but this game has been out for quite some time now, and you guys are still updating it, making new content for it, and coming up with, like, crazy stuff. Like, <laughs> what's what's it like just kind of, like, coming into work every day and know that you, you just, you're just going to be like, I'm going to find new ways to eviscerate monsters? Oh, I love it, man. Like, the Killing Floor is like my dream property to work on. And when I was able to uh, become uh, the game director of the project, I was super excited because I've been working on it since Killing Floor 1. So it's, you know, it's pretty much almost a decade now. Um, and, yeah. you know, the cool thing is that our, uh, our player base is actually bigger now than it was even when we released. So it's, it's growing. It's not going, you know, going back. So that's really exciting. And, uh, Nice. This year we have four major updates coming out. Uh, we did the first one in March. This one just dropped yesterday, and then we got two more, like really, really big ones. And we, you know, we have a really new, exciting, whole new event that has never happened before. That's going to happen, you know, later down the road. What is it? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, tell us. Well, I mean, Halloween time. I mean, know. wait, is that PR we'll, rep we'll anywhere? There'll be some All surprises. Right. Nice Halloween time. Oh man, I can only I could only yeah, imagine can, the yeah, horrors that await us be around Halloween time. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. And then you guys also recently did a VR version of, of yeah, Killing John Floor actually, as well. Uh, worked really hard on that one. That's yeah. right. Yeah, we uh, we did Killing Floor Incursion, which was a all new uh, an all new game set in the Killing Floor universe. Uh, had a full campaign that you could play co-op and I, and really super fun to make. And it's just terrifying seeing the Killing Floor Zeds in VR, you know, standing next to a nine-foot flush pound. I, I don't know, just a lot of pucker factor there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I live in an apartment complex, so I really can't scream a lot. Or, or I guess I could, but people would probably, like, knock on my door. I hope, I hope. That would be really, that would be really crappy of my neighbors if I was just screaming from horrors trying to destroy me and they didn't come check on me. They'd but probably call the cops. I would, something. At least, as long, killed it there. As long we, as somebody does something. When we first started bringing people in to test it, uh, we had, I was in my office and I heard this lady shrieking in terror from probably 50 feet away. And I, I come into the room. I, I thought she was really, really hurt. And I come into the room and she is trying to jump on top of a table because one of the crawlers, which are like human sized spider monsters, had come out and she just <laughs> flipped out. Oh and, my gosh. And jumped on top of a table in real life. Oh, yeah, it's it's way more stressful in VR. Like, yeah. like you see that, you know, when you're just playing it normally, it, it doesn't have that impact. But VR, when we see all those genetic yeah. freaks coming at you, yeah. it's, you, know, it's you really can't creepy. just look away from the screen. Like no. when you're totally just enveloped in everything around you. Yeah, it takes on a, a whole new level of just scariness, I guess, would be a way to put it. Man. Yeah, and we really, you know, there are things that, uh, that you learn that are really kind of scary in VR uh, so you know I think kind of the rules of VR say don't do those things because they're, they're they're too much for players so of course we do those things of course of course you know hey you know standing on a very very high ledge you know super scary cool we're gonna make the player do that yeah. you know three-story monsters cool we're gonna do that uh, oh, just Finding ways we can mess with players' heads a little bit. Mm, nice. Now, when you guys when you guys originally came out with Killing Floor Two, did you think it would have this sort of lifespan and like growing fan base that it's got, or was it like going to be the sort of thing where like, all right, let's get this out the door and then we're going to move on to the next thing? Like, no. I mean, we we at, we structured everything already knowing that it was going to basically do this because it followed the same cadence that Killing Floor One did. Mm -hmm. Killing for One just kept growing over time, and then when we started doing the events, these special things where all the creatures are looking different. Um, in Killing for One, we didn't really have things structured so that it was easy to do that. So when we developed Killing for Two, we already had that in mind. Like, okay, how can we make the system better? 
so that we can make these events better, uh, you know, switching out more sound effects and animations. You know, like some of the creatures during the event will switch some of the animations up. Uh, we couldn't do that before in KF1. Um, we, so nice. we structured the whole game so that it could grow over time. Nice. You you, you built it on a Lego platform, sort of, right? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, it would we, work within the system. Yeah, what well, was really challenging, I think, when we first shipped Killing Floor 2, uh, was to, was, especially when we shipped it in early access with a smaller amount of content, was to, was to get the buy-in from the fans that we were going to keep adding stuff. Like, well, hey, wait a minute, Killing Floor 1 had, you know, all of these maps and all these weapons and all these features and you know yeah and it took us six years to do that post release yeah Man. so to, to get to get that buy-in you know to where they're like okay they are going to keep updating the game they are yeah. going to keep adding new game types and weapons and monsters and bosses and and all of this yeah. cool stuff now you're getting like like four updates a year or something yeah. like that you know and the updates they're huge they're not you know when you say updates i mean we like to call them content packs because update yeah. Update sounds like you did a patch, yeah. right? Yeah. These are some bug fixes and like back oh, in the day. I mean, these are static yeah, strikers. Here, right here, here they are, right here. Back not in the day, I was, gonna, I was gonna say, hey, you should use the new weapons, but yeah. This is Could I in counter day, this with fabric softener? These would have been. <laughs> <laughs> these would have been expansion be packs. Yeah. yeah. You know, for, yeah. you know, back back in the old retail model. Uh, so they're big updates, multiple maps, four new weapons, playable characters, all of this stuff. You know, really. Not just cosmetically changing the gameplay, but but actually fundamental new additions to the gameplay. Like, what do you got? Like, objective mode back now, right? Yeah. So uh, in this update, um, we're we're bringing back objective mode. And in, in Killing Floor One, when we introduced objective mode, it was actually during the summer sideshow, um, and it, it it had to deal with uh, Ringmaster Lockhart, which is like this crazy inventor. Uh, and he's got his own like circus and you have to help him escape and get on this airship and then in this one he's uh that airship was like a smaller transport to like his mother kind of his mother base airship and now you're on this and you're trying to get him to his home island so it's actually continuing that story nice so you're building you're building more narrative as as the game progresses as well yeah i mean you know uh you know primarily killing floor is definitely a horde game you jump in you play uh but the People also really like objective mode, so we're adding that as well. So it's not like we're going to be getting rid of it. It's just supplementing an addition to, uh, you know, the base of the game. I definitely need purpose in my life, yeah. so that helps a lot for me. But, so. you know, and we've also, uh, we've added a new uh, feature called the weapon upgrade system. And uh, I'm really, really excited about this one because, so we have 73 weapons. Um, but in the past, each weapon, there was like one Basically, people like decided, okay, this is the perfect loadout for your your perk, which generally in other games is your class. And uh, it just kind of got old because you always just, you know, it's like, get this, get that. Yeah, this, this is the meta. Do this thing do, every yeah. time. Yeah. Oh, you're not doing that thing? You're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> so what the we've done is yeah. Uh, yeah. in this new system, you can take any weapon and you can put your dash into it uh, to actually upgrade it to make it viable in late play. But there's trade-offs to doing it. Um, each time you upgrade your weapon, the weight block goes up by one. So it's limiting totally what you can carry. And the other trade-off is that, say you take like a tier one weapon, you fully upgrade it to the max tier five. Um, by the time you've done that, you actually have to invest more money than if you just bought a tier five weapon. But getting to that is actually easier because you're tier one and it's like 300, to go to tier two, while tier two costs six fifty. So there's trade-offs depending on like what's happening while you're playing. You might decide, all right, I'm gonna take my tier one. I'm gonna upgrade it once. I'm gonna let that carry me to the you know basically wave five or so, and then I'm gonna put my money into a to a high tier weapon. Or if you're struggling or you get killed, um, you can like take a low tier weapon, upgrade it, so you're still like viable with your team. So. There's just so there's so much more variation of what you can do, nice. and we're you know like we're looking to keep improving it. It's uh, it's one of those things where some of our fans they really like the new system, other fans they they, they really like hate it, and uh, or at least they, that's what they're saying right now. But it's one of those things like we're listening to the feedback, we're looking at ways to you know to improve it, 
but I think overall it's really good for the the health of the game to give people new things to you know to explore so the game doesn't get stale you know because Killing Floor is like a living type of uh, project you know it keeps nice. changing and evolving. Now speaking of projects and changing and evolving uh, I, you know before we went out of time here I want to talk about some of the other things you guys are involved in and I don't want to Hog up, David. If you have any questions, you know, just feel free to. Oh no, I was really know. interested in in branching out more into publishing. We saw the trailer for Man Eater. The game looks awesome. So, can Thanks. you tell us how yes. you got involved in that project and and what your what Tripwire Wire's well, plans are for the publishing side of things? Yeah, so we uh, we have been thinking about publishing for some time, and we a lot of times we have because of our experience starting as a mod team, then becoming a professional developer and then finding the Killing Floor mod and taking it commercial, we get a lot of independent developers come to us, hey, can you publish our game for us? Right. And we were like, well, no, because we don't do that. Right. And, and finally, we, we just talked about it and said, why don't we stop saying no? You know, when these people come to us with really cool stuff that we can add value to, uh, helping them get noticed above the 5,000 games coming out a year, right. Uh, when they have really cool stuff, let's do that. And one of the first people that came to us was Alex Quick uh, with the studio Blindside. And if, if you don't recognize the name, Alex Quick was the original modder making Killing Floor, the mod. Oh, wow. Back in 2005. Oh, so, so of course you're going to, like, help help that dude out. Well, right? and he I came mean... to us, and he had... You know, he had done Depth, which was Sharks versus Human multiplayer. That game had done really good, but he said, I want to make something with Sharks where you play as a shark and there's a full campaign and open world, you know, an action RPG or a shark PG. I love it. I love that you guys call it a shark PG because that was <laughs> like the first thing one of our writers said when, when we saw it at the <laughs> PC gaming uh, press conference yesterday. Like that was the first thing. He's like Shark PG, bro. Yep. And you guys, you guys have, you guys have embraced that, that that term. I love it. Yeah. I'm I'm kind of good. obsessed with this game now, Manny. You should be. You know, oh. the, when when he pitched it to me, it it seemed it seemed a little weird. And then I played it and I said, Wow, this is really fun. Playing as a shark is really fun. Just eating eating people. The first time mm -hmm. you find a beach full of people and you sneak in, start picking them off, <laughs> you're hooked. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I feel like I feel like it's a great angle to take that hasn't been taken in games before, and it seems like something like this should have been made a long time ago. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, we're glad it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, obvi yeah. obviously, great timing for you guys, but so, so what is Tripwire's yeah. level of of involvement in in Man Eater? So we're you know it depends on the game. Some some games were were funding. Some games were marketing. Some you know younger developers were giving mentoring to and, and helping them navigate the waters of, of going from a smaller independent you know to really getting their games commercial. Some developers are more experienced and they you know they just they need some 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 money to get the game across the finish line. Sure. So uh, so it really depends on the game. Nice. Yeah. Um, I mean, and with Maneater, you know, we're just trying to help and, and add value where where we can. So you know, we've helped with stuff with animations and. You know uh, rigs and stuff like that and you know oh, what i really i really want to know why no hollow notes in the trailer ah uh, yes like i'm sorry i gotta ask i will or will hollow notes be making an appearance in the game <laughs> <laughs> uh not that i'm aware of but uh yeah it would not be the first time that subject has come up i mean i can with a game like man eater i imagine it comes up a lot yeah yeah like just, just maybe they'll reach out to us, and maybe it'll reinvigorate the song for them. And <laughs> you know, I I don't know Hollow Notes, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get a hold of them. Okay. I'm gonna let them know what's going on if, if I can. Yeah, let them let them know. I'll just be like Daryl, John. I got a project for you guys. I'm not involved in it. I don't know either of you, but trust me on this one. <laughs> <laughs> that would be. Great. So before we wind down here, Bill, is there anything else you wanted to say about this latest update to Killing Floor 2? Uh, I hope people really enjoy it. You know, we're just uh, constantly adding adding to the product. And, you know, I um, want to thank all the fans, all the people that, that play our game and allow us to be able to do what we love to do. You know, I always just think uh, 
you, know, you always have to remind yourself like how blessed we are to be able to do what we love because so many people can't do that you know so yeah Hell yeah. And then, um, like, obviously you guys have Man Eater coming up. Are you guys going to be publishing any other titles in the near future? Yes. Yeah, so we're, we're also publishing Road Redemption, nice. which is about riding motorcycles and beating people with clubs. Hell uh, yeah, brother. No. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that game, I mean, it came out on Steam late last year, but uh, we're really helping them grow and succeed more on Steam, but also growing the franchise beyond Steam. Oh, Maybe, so. maybe, maybe coming to the switch. <laughs> you never know. You never know. You'll just have to <laughs> stick around and find Fishing out. It. Okay. Fishing it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot for coming on, guys. We really enjoyed the conversation. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah Killing absolutely. Floor Two is looking man. great. Uh, I'm looking forward to Man Eater as well, and, and your other publishing projects in the future. And uh, that'll do it for for this interview and for day one of the Shack News That's Live. That's it for day Eastern one. Show. Yeah. Day one is over. High fives all around. Well, elbow. Over. elbow. Thanks a lot for joining us. We'll see you all tomorrow. tomorrow. All right.